The harsh reality and regrets of going vegan, Derek Sarno. Now I did watch a Derek Sarno video just recently, problems with veganism, something like that. And I really enjoyed it. He is a chef. Everything just looks so delicious. In the video I watched, he just made like a simple sandwich. But oh man, it like, I don't know, it looks so delicious. And then there's my food. Anyway, uh, he is also co-founder or founder of Wicked Kitchen. That is a vegan food company. I have tried their ice cream. I think I mentioned that here before. Not my favorite. It's a little bit weird. I forgot what the base ingredient is, but I believe they're the only company who uses that as a base ingredient for vegan ice cream. Not my favorite thing. They have a whole range of products though. I think they have some sauces. Oh right, we do have their vegan bacon mayo, something like that partner. And my firstborn, my seven-year-old really like that. I don't think I've even tried it to be honest. <laughs> I think they have some soups, you know, really like expensive vegan stuff, right? It's a small vegan company. It's going to be really expensive for what it is. And it looks like similar to the other video, he's starting with a recipe and then going into what he wants to talk about. So similar to vlogs, right? Vlogs kind of turned into that. There seems to be like a hook that's later in the video where it's whatever the person's talking about, but the rest of the video is just like cleaning up cat shit and eating my smoothie. I, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna skip the recipe. I, I'm sure it's fantastic. Okay, he's got like a little <laughs> countdown timer. Oh, it's earlier in the video, that's nice. I never thought I would go vegan, let alone become a vegan chef. I can't say for sure if it was fear or if I just didn't want to bother changing. Eating meat and cooking animals was part of my identity. It was who I was. And I used to make fun of my brother so much for being vegan, thinking it was just plain stupid. Right, so I think it's the both of them started Wicked Kitchen, but that's so interesting. So his brother was vegan first and then eventually that uh, convinced him, cool. I used to think it wasn't cool, and it was even beneath me. Cooking meat was everything. I mean, how would I make my living just cooking veggies? That's what I thought. Now I realize all that was just based on fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of challenging myself, fear of doing something different, fear of stepping out of my comfort zone, and fear what people are gonna think of me. And to be completely transparent, it all boiled down to my ego and being narrow-minded. Not gonna cry. Oh my God, children have ruined me. <laughs> I cry at the drop of a hat. I've said before, I have virtually no expectation when it comes to foodie type people, particularly people who actually make money selling or making food like chefs. I just have, I have almost less expectation from them going vegan or even just eating fewer animal products than I do of like farmers. <laughs> I almost think it's easier for someone involved in animal agriculture to separate themselves from the end product, you know, how the, their own personal lifestyle from their job than it is for like a chef, particularly one who really loves food and making different foods. I, I just, I just have like no expectation <laughs> of them even taking veganism or reducetarianism, flexitarianism seriously at all. And yet I am proven wrong time and time again. Uh, Derek Sarno is not the only chef who has turned to vegetarianism, flexitarianism, or even veganism. People are surprising and people can change, even the, the last person you would ever expect to change. Not to take any credit away from Derek, he's the one who ultimately made these decisions, but I, you know, his brother probably deserves some amount of credit for being just a source of uh, inspiration. So yeah, I don't know. It's nice. I should have saved this video for after because I am watching another one, a Paul Saladino, why veganism is a bad video. I'm gonna need something like this as a palate cleanser. I didn't want to sacrifice anything. Thought I would lose that coolness about me because we, we all know how cool I am. Oh, sweetheart, you're an absolute king among nerds. <laughs> so bad but also somehow did make him cooler that's just that's how it works for for us young people you know i saw this video that was like it's crazy how people born in 2000 are 24 but also people born in 1984 like myself are also 24. i've always loved animals and i needed to align my moral compass and once i realized the animals that i was butchering and cooking and eating were no different than the ones that I loved and cuddled and pet and adored. It was a no-brainer. Just to be clear, you do not have to be a self-described animal lover to go vegan. I actually have a whole old video now. Maybe I should update that. I'll have to watch it again. I probably need to update it at this point, but I have an old video that is for people who do not describe themselves as animal lovers and why they should still go vegan, reduce animal product consumption. I myself today would not describe myself as an animal lover. We have no pets. And quite frankly, <laughs> after growing up with pets, being a pet sitter, 
been around a lot of cats and dogs. It is very nice. <laughs> it's very nice to not have any animals. Now, if we adopted a dog or something, I'm sure I'd love the thing and, you know, I'd be an animal lover all over again. Not harming animals is not about love. It's not about wanting to be around those animals and pet and cuddle those animals. It's just not wanting to harm them because it's not right. It's like people. I don't want to cuddle and pet <laughs> and be around most people. I also don't want to harm them and I want them to live happy lives. Now I'm practicing compassion in real time, not just wishing for it. This one change saves countless lives, both animal and human. And it's that knowledge that keeps me motivated every day. Again, check out that video. Zoonotic diseases are not going to go away, right? You don't have to care about animals at all. You don't have to care in even just like a, I don't want them to be harmed, right? You can say, I don't care if they're harmed or not. Don't care. Well, do you care about people? You should care about zoonotic diseases. Doing this is how you get zoonotic diseases. And there are other smaller things too. I was just reading a study about airborne mutagens, compounds that are created via cooking, particularly frying meats. So HACs you've probably heard of and the possible problems this can cause when you are cooking these foods a lot. So if you are a chef in a restaurant cooking these foods, not great for you to be breathing that in all the time, not great for your lungs. And this study looked at uh, specifically bacon, which was the worst, beef, and also uh, soy, tempeh. And the tempeh produced none, even when fried, none. My point is that's another little like, you don't care about animals, okay, but your obsession with animal products, with beef and bacon is hurting others too, right? If you were to order the tempeh burger instead, you're actually maybe helping your fellow man. I'm not gonna say it's always been easy, but I will tell you that it's super worth it. And my number one biggest regret. This better be good, you cheeky monkey. <laughs> about going vegan is that I didn't do it sooner. It's definitely right up there with one of the best decisions I've ever made. Darling, being my chef biatch is the best decision you've ever made. This is so adorable. This is a, I don't wanna say older gentleman, a, an established gentleman who loves his dog very much. And I just imagine him spending exorbitant amounts of time on these little bits and just making himself laugh. And it's adorable, I love it, but it's also very cringe. That's okay, we're all cringe. Okay, he's making more food now. Was that it? Was that the regret? Was that the regret? It's sweet, but like, come on. Didn't he call it a rant? How is, what does it, come on. Meal looks delicious. I thought there was like no protein in there, but he does use TVP. He has this really lovely section just talking about how he was resistant to trying TVP until he saw Sauce Stash, which is a great channel, highly recommend. He does all sorts of like mock meats and comes up with all these new recipes. Really, really cool. Sauce Stash and uh, the vegan dude the vegan dude i get them confused i'm not gonna lie <laughs> both great channels um anyway yeah he goes on this whole thing about like he finally tried tvp and it's fantastic it just you know you just got to use it right and flavor it right right so that was it the rest of the video is just making that delicious recipe which i will never make because it looks like it takes forever but i will spend like an hour making cookies because a little disappointing. Like I thought he was actually going to talk about regrets instead of the standard, like I regret not doing it sooner, which is very sweet and wonderful. But you know, there are some potential downsides to going vegan, especially in the short term. A lot of people have digestive issues. A lot of people have social issues even in the long term. So um, yeah, you know, I would like more discussion of that, but I'm going to go back to that other video of his. I said I watched. It's called What Vegans Are Getting Wrong. Great title. But my one gripe with vegans is you, you can never be vegan enough. But when people come at me and they say, oh, you got to sit on a leather couch. My couch I saved up a lot of money and time to buy, that's a vegan Chesterfield couch because I'm in the UK. I saved my money to buy that. But people attacking and automatically judging, I don't know, it does nothing for the, it does nothing for the movement. It doesn't do anything. It shows, we're a bunch of, shows you're an ass. It shows you're human. And I'm not saying every human does this, but I'm saying there are humans, vegan or not, who do this. We all know this, right? You go to, the internets, you go to the Instagrams and you see, you know, some mom, let's say, posting just like, I here's what I made for my kids lunch or something. And in the background, the living room's messy or something. Like people are going to comment and say, oh my God, really? Like you don't clean up after your kid. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I, I've seen, I wish I could think of a specific example because I've seen 
so much crazy shit, just like the weirdest things people assume and that they take from other people's videos. And often like they assume the worst, right? It's like the vegan assuming, oh, that couch looks like leather. It must be actual leather. Even though you say you're a vegan and you've been vegan nine years, that must be real leather. Why the fuck would you assume? What? Wouldn't your first thought be, well, it's probably not leather. Or if it is leather, they've probably had it for a long time. Maybe someone gifted it to them. You know, it's not something that they like went out and purchased or maybe they got it secondhand. Like, why would you just assume oh, liar? You're lying to like, what is that? That makes you seem insane. But my point is that it's not so much a vegan thing as it is just a people thing. People just do this, particularly on the internet where you are anonymous and just I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about the keyboard <laughs> that brings these things out of people. But um, yeah, it's very human. Just the people who are trying to eat one meal a week to be more plant-based and vegan is a huge step for a lot of people. Everybody is on a different level. I've dealt with a lot of grief in my life. That's one of the reasons why I go on those silent retreats is to really face into it. And what I've learned is the five steps of grief are very much like the five steps of going plant-based. You know, when I was beginning, before I ever went vegan, I was like, no way would I ever, ever do that. No way. I was a chef. I was cooking everything. I wanted you to like my food. I didn't care what happened, what it was. I talked about this in one of my last videos, the Tash Peterson one. It's possible, if not probable that a lot of us who weren't, you know, born into this, like my children, we've always fed them vegan, right? But many of us like, no, we had to make that decision. And for many of us, we started with like, what? That's so stupid. I know I did. What? No, we need meat. Look at our teeth. We need meat. There's no forcing it on anybody. I cannot force people to eat more vegetables. I didn't like a lot of vegetables when I was a kid. I love them now. I eat tons of them. I even, I have a cooking show about them. How many vegetables have I had today? I had a banana in my protein smoothie. I, I know, I know it's not a vegetable, but I, I'm counting them together, okay? Veggies and fruit. You need your, what is it, nine servings, fruits and veggies, two cups of romaine and cucumber. I don't know, a lot, a lot of cucumber. I don't know. A bunch of cherry and grape tomatoes, some homegrown, some from the store. Oh my God, the ones we grow at home are so good. I forgot what the variety is, what it's actually called, but there's something, it's got, just, I don't know, there's something about that flavor. It's so yummy, it's so good. Then some beans, some great Northern beans, which not a vegetable, but the USDA counts it as a vegetable. That's what I'm saying. My job was to sometimes tour slaughterhouses. When you're in that space of death, it's horrible. It is horrible. Whether you eat meat or don't eat meat, it's freaking horrible. And for me, I just take carry that with me everywhere I go, that grief, that impermanence. That's why I'm vegan or plant-based. I don't even like to use, call myself vegan. I just like to consider myself a compassionate, conscientious, courageous person who's trying to do the right thing. You should call yourself vegan though. I, I mean, I think it's, I go back and forth. Like I don't, you know, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't really care if someone says I'm vegan, but I don't use that label. That said, I think definitions do matter. It's okay to have a little bit of wiggle room, right? I've talked before about, you know, often identity helps us to stick with something and to follow our morals. And so it can make sense even if you do have meat or cheese or something here and there to like consider yourself vegan. It can, I think, possibly help you be more vegan, but definitions do matter. And there is a difference between vegan and plant-based, right? Vegan is always plant-based. Plant-based is not always vegan. Many use plant-based to mean no animal products whatsoever, but not all. And certainly something being based on something else does not mean it's that in its entirety, right? So it would make sense that plant-based would just mean mostly plants. Like it could mean all plants, but it could also mean mostly plants. And then vegan is an ethical position. You know, it's a, it's a philosophy, whereas plant-based is just a diet and it has nothing to do with like makeup or shoes or couches or furs. But for people to knock people down because they're trying are not as vegan as they want them to be because they, there is no perfect world for this. There's no perfect world. We all live in this gray area. Me, especially, I feel like I'm in swimming in the gray, especially here in England. Because the weather. I get it. I'm, I'm with you, man. Pacific Northwest, although it's beautiful and sunny right now, but uh, not for much longer. Gotta embrace the gray. Speaking of gray, I just started buying my kids school supplies. I have two kids now going to school. My uh, oldest will be in second and my middle will be going to kindergarten. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. But point is on the kindergarten list is uh, Crayola 
paint, the little washable in the pan paint. And I'm pretty sure that paintbrush is like boar's hair. I'm pretty sure it's not synthetic. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure. I went ahead and bought it. Maybe not very vegan of me. Maybe I should say something to the teacher. Maybe I should look for an alternative 16 pan paint that has a synthetic brush. But to me, you know, it's like a dollar thing of paint with a tiny bit of boar's hair. I, I bought the paint. Embrace the gray. If somebody's sharing a vegan idea, oh, I ate this, but they're wearing a vegan leather belt, or I mean, uh, they're wearing a leather belt, pick your battles. Vegans that come onto this channel and I see vegans attacking other vegans because they're not vegan enough, it's just not cool. Not cool. The coolest way to say someone is not cool. I got in so much trouble for the Christina thing years ago, Foley Raw Christina had some leather shoes or something. I don't even remember what it was, but man, people were so mad at me for just saying like this, this vitriol towards her is, it's out of whack. It's just ridiculous. Like having some leather shoes does not at all compare to what you're eating day in and day out. Particularly this person who is promoting a potentially really dangerous diet that is mostly just fruits and vegetables for people to only care about leather shoes and to seemingly not care at all about the danger she's putting people in who are following her plans. Like it just, man, it just made me feel kind of crazy to be honest. Are leather shoes vegan? No, I would rather people not have leather shoes, but to get so angry about that and not about fucking dates and dates and dates and maybe a little bit of lettuce and a tiny bit of avocado for a, a day of eating, this seems a little nuts to me. I don't know. Thank you for following and supporting everything that we're doing here. I really want to start opening up more and sharing a lot more with the food and the whys and the hows and the whatnots. And of course, Miss America. But I just wanted to share you guys. If you ever catch me knocking down anybody that's vegan and trying slap me on the wrist because I don't want to be that person. He is so sweet and whatever he's doing, it's working. I mean, this, this video has 300,000 views. Like it looks like his videos are doing really well and people are really enjoying the kind of opening up and talking about veganism and not just the food, not just the recipes. So yeah, whatever he's doing, uh, keep doing it. It's a great channel. And now I have to go listen to Paul Saladino talk about, I don't know, what was the video called? I think it was just what he thinks about a vegan diet or something. It's going to be lectins, maybe. Does he talk a lot about lectins, phytates, something like that? You know, anti-nutrients. It's either going to be anti-nutrients or it's going to be meat has so many things that plants don't, right? It's going to be like carnosine or taurine or something. Plants feel pain? Maybe? Probably not. <laughs> Who knows? Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please do like and subscribe if you did. And thank you so much to my members and my patrons. They help to support the channel and keep it going. You know, most of my videos take a whole lot of work. I'm actually working on a uh, book review, which is, oh my God, I don't know. I've put so many hours already. I'm not even finished with the book yet. I mean, I take notes like while I'm reading. So it's a whole thing. It's a book that you guys have been requesting for a long time. You'll probably be able to figure out what it is. Um, yeah. So I'm working on that. And yeah, my my patrons, my members help me to to do this. And it's just, it's just so awesome. You know, I love that I get to do videos like this where I, you know, react to other vegans or anti-vegans and just have fun. Like I really have a lot of fun recording these kind of videos, but I also get to do the other thing that I love, which is read, basically <laughs> read and learn. I have so much fun doing this. And thank you so much to those of you who support me. Even those of you who just watch the videos, you are also supporting the channel. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, yeah, oh, I do post exclusive content for uh, tier two members and patrons. I do two videos a month, a vlog, and then a controversial video, just kind of stuff, whatever, really, whatever I want to talk about that doesn't have anything to do with like veganism, environment, sustainability, anything like that. And yeah, that's it. Oh no, my memory card is full. So okay, good timing. Thank you guys. New video soon.